I love original concepts. They allow the designers to do whatever. You don't have to follow the series too closely and they come up with things that could work within the show. But they also make some crummy cash-ins. Like the transforming gimmick gets overused everywhere. So rangers start transforming into cars. They could, they have Tommy turn into a sink. What I also noticed is Bandai would add an insane amount of bikes, ATVs, cars to animal-based seasons. That never works. PR is not Batman. You can't just give them anything. Thanks goes to the stereotypical evil mastermind for the suggestion. If you have an idea or topic you'd like me to cover, leave a comment below. I might use it in a future video. Triple transforming Megazord 1. Overdrive already had a slew of Zords, a mandatory reissue of Zords to fix the combining problems with the dual drive, while releasing two triple transforming Megazords that never appeared on the show. They look ugly, more so the first one. It's this bland white theme with colored edged lines. It's inspired from the Super Zeo Megazord. The formations don't impress. They were all weird lengths. The arms were really long in certain modes. They hardly did anything because of the three changing combinations, no detail. It's nowhere near the Time Force Megazord. That was a good triple transforming Zord. The second one wasn't any better. Its appearance was improved, no boring white nonsense. I really wouldn't have too much of a problem with these, but we got this junk while the Flashpoint never came out. You're telling me a Six Ranger Zord is not gonna sell? Zord Armor Ranger. I nicknamed the figure Red Gundrop Ranger. Special looking figures are nice, but you can't black paint. Bandai was really dropping the ball in this department. The exosuit design for this one isn't bad, but the lack of paint makes this thing horrible. The most important part, the dinosaur head, which is used in the second mode, has no detail. So it looks like a boxing glove. You can't tell what the thing is from far away. It could be a robotic arm. The green color they chose doesn't suit it. Overall, it could have been something interesting. I think this would have worked well in the series as an upgrade to the T-Rex supercharged suit. It's just underwhelming. But it does look like something a certain spin-off series might have used for some repaint inspiration. Radio controlled SPD cycle. Probably the worst looking figure from SPD. I don't get it. It has an automorphing head. The body does need to be bigger. That's what they did back in 93, but you don't put armor on top of that. Look at the size of the torso. It's ridiculous. It's like a scene from Looney Tunes. This would cause problems driving the toy. The bike itself, it's okay. Nothing moves on it besides the wings. Now the remote, probably the dumbest choice in design. There's a reason why remote controls are made sideways and not vertically. Who'd they hire? The guys from Intellivision? It's even more stupid when you see the prototype version on the box. It's shorter while the final version is longer. How do you hold the thing and push buttons? What's all this space? They had made the buttons on the bottom like how smartphones have their keypads. It could work. So you have to hold it with two hands so the long base is pointless. Those are great sword armor ranger. PR can make very cheap looking toys. This is high on the list. Every department, design, functionality, painting, all failed. I mean, look at the Red Ranger. It's not just a lack of paint. The one thing they paint, the visor, and it makes him look like he's looking down. It's supposed to look like the Gosei Great Megazord if it was crossed with Noah. They added those swords, just random stuff. The figure goes into the chest, kind of like an exosuit. There's another version that looks like the legendary Megazord. That one's better if I can say that. This is bare bones. Cool that you wanted to do something with both seasons. It could have been a special combining set that let you form the Gosei Great Legend Megazord or something. Why bother making figures like this? They look horrible. Samurai Kiss Cycles. These fall into the boring category and one of the major factors why the Zord Builder system was stupid. One of the main reasons why the toys were remolded besides saving cost was to allow all kinds of combinations. So you could stick the arm from this season and it worked with another season. Japan did that too. Many seasons shared the same connectors. You could use Bokenders and Shinkenders stuff in certain cases, but Bandai America wanted to add other things. So here comes the disc cycles. They're just leg add-ons that work from MMPR 2010 to Ninja Steel. The bikes are generic, just this engine looking piece with ranger symbols. Once you got two, you didn't need the other ones. On their own, they really don't do much. So kids are forced to have one of the Megazords. They had more functions and detail, not just leg pieces, but also a visor add-on, shoulder pads. That's what makes a Zord combo. Things that split up a puzzle piece. That complexity is what makes it interesting. When you stick it on as a leg, you end up thinking, why did I pay 20 bucks? 
Mighty Dragon Mobile. Why are you giving Magic Animal Seasons cars? This never looks good. I'll give it effort on trying to look like Fireheart's head, but that doesn't translate well into a race car. If it was a bike, which they did do a million times, that's fine because Nick owns a motorcycle. That reminds me, how come they never thought of making his regular bike transform into his ranger bike? The figure that comes with it is ugly. The armor's just gray pieces. It looks like you're missing attachments. Then there's a blue variant for Daggeron. I'm surprised how hard they push Daggeron in the toy line when he's hardly used on the show. There is one spooky thing about this toy. It has a striking resemblance to the Eagle Zord from RPM. So someone at Bandai Japan must have looked at this. Worked great in a car season, not so great with old fashioned style and magic. Red Morphing Ranger. Again with the cars. And it's not just a car, it's a suit of armor. Not with MMPR. Bikes work, not racers. I get it, MMPR has very little to sell compared to the newer seasons of the time, so the 2010 line added all these crazy things. I'm not saying everything's bad, some things were interesting, but Bandai chose to not make things that were never released, like, I don't know, monster figures, the team using Green Ranger Shield, re-release all the past stuff. They had the chance, but they do things like lightsaber, dragon dagger, and this thing. It's not even a good design. Battle armor is supposed to protect the person. Jason's just standing there in the open. If this was the power loader from Alien, it makes sense. It's not intended to be a weapon. This is just stupid. Then you have the figure. Give people more reason to not like it. They just painted the diamond and belt. Even the car is painted poorly. Legendary locomotive. Is this why trains don't sell? Well, when you make something this weird, who's really gonna get it? It's literally Daggeron and Nick, for some reason, transforming into a train. That's it. Now, I will admit that the armor Nick gets here looks good. If it was painted more, this train thing really made no sense. Stuff like this is okay, but other things like Jinji's lamp doesn't get released. When I look at this stuff, I'm also trying to look through my eyes when I was a kid. I really didn't like anything that was not in the series. Things like this is the reason why. PR has transforming stuff, but you can't do anything. Armor, yes. Ground vehicles, no. I know it's a Japanese thing. They love making transforming stuff. Look at that Disney Transformer nonsense. They'll use anything, but some things go too far. Silver Titanus. I know someone in their office needed to come up with a filler toy. They had Titanus probably laying there, popped off the head and went, good idea. No, no it wasn't. If they had made a totally new carrier Zord, I'd be more open to it. Keep the basic idea of the back compartment that fits all kinds of Zords, but not use Titanus itself. I mean, they had the guts to even keep the name. Most of the time with their reissues, they make up crummy replacements like the Super Zeo Megazord being called the Super Galactic Megazord. This keeps its name? It looked horrible. They added on this back wing that holds the cannons, replaced the head with rocket launchers, and the front where the dragons or chests went, randomly holds the V3 rocket. None of it makes sense. Half animal, weapons, and whatever Zord you want to stick in there. What's even more stupid? The toy is called Silver Titanus and the prototype version on the box is 90% white. Then they painted the rest silver. Today, the only real use for this is for you to say, I own a Silver Titanus. The rest just use it for replacement parts. They even took the motor function out. So it's a hunk of hollow plastic. Ninja Storm Action Racers. The most ugly toys I've ever seen. Want to make something look stupid? Stick a face on it. These things are Happy Meal toys. Remember the 95 MMPR movie toys McDonald made? Why would you put a human face on a car? Animals are stretching it with RPM. Faces are a no-no. The figures are even bad. They don't really move. Most of the races came with the Red Ranger. They made a blue version of the Wind Megazord head. Blake's figure gets a black car? I don't even understand this. It doesn't look like the Thunder Megazord's face. And they're super tiny, just as big as a five inch figure. You need another toy, the Turbo Transporter, to launch them. The only one really worth having is the 2003 Toy Fair Special Edition. None of these toys are remembered. I get it from a company perspective, make product, but your product has to show effort. A perfect example I always go to, the Lightning Morpher from Ninja Storm. A designer spent time making a new morpher. Every other time after, all the battleizers just repainted the Six Ranger Morpher. That's lazy. 
People will avoid things that look cheap. If you make it interesting and show effort, more people are willing to spend the money. Just because you make something big doesn't mean it warrants a $90 price tag. I will take a smaller item that has higher detail over something like the Lion Fortress Zord. What do you think of my choices? What were your experience with these items? Was there anything I missed that was worse? New episodes Mondays, fan commentaries Wednesdays. Next week, my favorite Super Sentai mechs from the pre Ranger seasons. If you like my content, consider leaving a like and subscribing. Due to fair use abuses from the various companies, I no longer feature footage from the various episodes. Thank you for understanding. See you in the next video.